Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm terribly nervous. <laughs> I know, I know, but I know I'm safe. <laughs> um, I just really want to honour our team. I know we do this exceptionally a lot. <laughs> um, but that's where I'm coming from this morning. I'm coming from this perspective of what these guys bring to us every yeah. week. Yeah, yeah. And how they get to that point each week to bring what they bring, to carry what they carry. And so I just really want to honour you guys and say, we are so blessed to have you. The thing with these people is that they're mighty talented. They've got more talent than I have. They're musicians. Their skills are phenomenal. But it's not their skills, or not just their skills, that make... It makes the service. Yeah, come on. It's like I said, it's what they carry. It's the overflow from the week that they've been in, the time that they've spent with God, preparing, just being with Him and listening to Him and seeking His heart. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. It's like, how do we, how do we replicate in our week what these guys do for us here of a Sunday morning? It's good. We want to, yeah. We want that intimacy that they have that can help us have moments in our weekly encounters with God. Nice. And sometimes it's hard. (laughs) Sometimes our weeks are really busy and we're rushing and there's distractions and things are vying for our attention. It could be our family, it could be our our children, our work, um, our hobbies, social media. There's just so many things that vie for our attention and sometimes stop us from entering in and having those encounters with God. Yeah. So I just want to, yeah, so God's been sort of sharing, talking to me about, I guess we've noticed a real difference in how our services have been lately. We've come on a really big journey from where we were were many, many years ago to now. And as we look at our services and what we do, the biggest difference is time and space. We have come to a point where we've learnt it's okay not to rush. It's okay to learn to sit and wait. We can have moments of quiet. We don't have to sing. We can just be music playing. And, yeah, that in those moments of quiet is where our team learn to what's... Because, like Jeff was saying a few weeks ago, they know the Father's voice. They know Him. They know His voice. So in those moments, they go, they can sense and feel where He wants to take us. And they're responsive to what He's asking them to do. They're obedient. And so out of that overflow of their week, they're bringing to us these moments of intimacy, these moments where God's revealing, you know, new revelations for us. So good. So how do we do that in our everyday week? So I've been looking at the first thing that's creating time. How do we create time in our week? Jesus set the best example for us. Yeah, come on. (laughs) All through the New Testament, he shows us. And it says in Luke 5, 16, Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. He spent time with the Father. He went to Him. Now, as I was looking this all up this week, Jesus was bombarded with people. (laughs) People were chasing after Him. They wanted what He had and they were vying for His attention. Like, tell us more, you know, tell us about the Father. Tell us, you know, how we're supposed to live life. For him, he was crowded by people. So he had to create time by getting away from people to go and spend with the Father on his own. And sometimes that meant for him that it was during the day, sometimes and very early in the morning, and sometimes it was late at night. But he had to intentionally choose to find time to spend with the Father. And... I think from what I've looked at, there was different reasons why he went to spend time with the Father. So our first example of where Jesus spends time with the Father is when he goes to the desert for 40 days. He's in that time um, where he's learning um, how to be 
strengthened and how to stand against the enemy. So that's the first example. Some other examples where he goes and spends time with the Father is when he goes just to pray and to seek the Father. So it says in Matthew, uh, Mark 1.35, Very early in the morning while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Everyone was looking for Jesus, but after his time in prayer, he told his disciples that was time for them to move on to another village. So in this instance, he was deliberately gone to seek God. And in those times where he's seeking God, he's actually got answers for the things that he needs. So I think, and there's other examples of that as well, where he goes deliberately to God to seek the answers that he needs. And then um, another one says, this is where he prays all night. (laughs) And Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him. Again, he's gone to God. Um, He's asking God who his disciples should be. And God told him. But he went to ask and he prayed faithfully all night (laughs) to discover which people he was to select. There's other times where... He, um, he's just gone to rest. He took his disciples and they've just gone to rest and be with Jesus. Um, because it says here in Mark 6, 31 and 32, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat. Jesus said to his disciples, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. So again, another purpose is just to go and be in his presence. Sometimes it's not even to talk, it's just to rest and be in that moment. Other times were um, in difficult times. So, for example, um, when Jesus had heard that John the Baptist had been beheaded and he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. So he went to the Father at that point for comfort. And again, um, in the Garden of Gethsemane as well, he's gone to God um, He's petitioning God at that point, um, which interestingly enough, I've always thought he went to petition him not to have to go to the cross, but it, that's not the case. He actually was petitioning God to um, to make sure that he was able to fulfil his duty on the cross. Um, but he was in, it, it shares that he was actually in great anguish, but he went to the Father. He spoke to the Father and come he on. prayed all night. Yes. He kept saying to his disciples, come on, why aren't you joining me? Like, come on, don't you know the urgency of this? So, um, you know, there's so many reasons why we we need to go to God. We need to create that time so that we can hear from him, that he can speak directly to us. And we don't. We often can't hear God when we're busy. When things are really busy in our everyday life, it's hard to decipher when God's speaking. But if we're spending time, intentionally spending time with God, we get to we get to know His voice. And then it is easier in those moments of busyness to be able to identify when the Father is speaking and to respond to Him. And that's what He wants. It's just this ongoing communication with him all the time so that we just get to know him and he just wants to even know the simplest things, the smallest parts of our life he just wants to talk to us I think I I said this a few weeks ago it's you know like a marriage, like a relationship where he just wants us to talk to each other, commune with each other and be together Yeah, yeah, and I just wrote here Philippians 4 verse 6 says, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout your day, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Yeah. Tell him every detail of your life. Yes. Right every detail. It doesn't, he doesn't care the reason that you're coming to him. He just wants you to come. True. Just True. come. Yeah. The other part is creating a physical space. And Matthew 6.6 6 in the message, it says, here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. I love this part. The focus will shift from you to God and you'll begin to sense His grace. And I just loved our worship this morning. We need to fix our attention on Jesus. (laughs) And it doesn't matter 
the space doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where it is. But it has to be right for you and God. Yeah, nice. it, doesn't, it doesn't matter where. He just wants us to come and fix our gaze on Him. Yeah. To give Him the things, the worries, the cares, the concerns that we have. He wants us to bring our praise to Him as well. Yes. It doesn't just have to be about the, the difficult parts of our life. And for Jesus, um, He quite often did have to create, like I was saying, because people were buying for His attention so much, He did have to create space and um, there's lots of examples where it actually tells us that he he went out on the water to get away from the people or he climbed a mountain so he had to that's intentional (laughs) you don't just happen to be in those spaces he actually had to go okay I identify that I need to go and spend time with the father and so I need to make a move to those spaces I love even you know, thinking about some people in our church who have shared with us before. So Heather just um, Atkinson recently shared with us that she's actually created a space in her home. So for her, she's created a room. She's put a couch in there. She's put a little music player. That's right for her. That's her space where she can be with God. Pastor Fiona shared with us heaps of times about being on her deck and spending time with the Father early in the morning. And good for you, but I'm not going to get up in the morning. <laughs> That's for you. That's that's right. That's that's your thing, and it's beautiful. And I love that. And I do honour you for doing that because, you know, you've spent that time with God, and then you can give out to us. So it's it's a beautiful thing. But and I also love the fact being outside and in nature as well. That's where Jesus was. He was in nature. So that's really beautiful as well. And then um, for me, like I said. Mornings aren't going to happen for me. <laughs> I barely get to work on time some days. So for me, it's more of an evening thing. I spend time with God. For me, I actually like to create an atmosphere in the space that I'm in. So when the kids are gone to bed, it might be that I've turned out the lights, I've lit a candle, I've put on some music. That's right for me. That's how I like to spend time with God. Fred's different again. He, he likes to be outside in, you know, doing his jobs and just talking with God. For each of us, it's going to look different and it's right. Whatever it is, so is right yeah. for you yeah. and God. So good. Again, it's just that he wants you to come. He wants you to come. He just wants you again to fix your attention on him. You don't have to come to perform. You just have to be yourself. You just have to be honest with him and have those conversations and rest in his presence. And again... I can't find an example anywhere in the Bible where Jesus rushed. No. He didn't rush. He did not rush. <laughs> and I think that's because he knew what the Father's plan was. He knew the Father was in control and he didn't, he didn't need to be worried. Recently I had a weekend away with a group of ladies and this sense of not rushing and also coming back to the worship that we have here at church where... We have lots of times now where we we don't sing. We just have the music playing and we just have this atmosphere and this presence of God. And we had created this on this weekend where we were... It actually was awkward. And it sounds like it was a really bad thing, but it wasn't. We sat in this room. There was no... There had been some music playing and, and someone had spoken and then we turned off everything. We just sat there for a really, really long time. But by not rushing, we had an opportunity to really sit in the presence of God, wait on Him and allow Him to speak to us. Again, we were able to recognise His voice because we gave Him that time and that space that He's asking us to give Him. And I guess personally for me as well, for a long time, and it's a bit of an excuse, I'm like... I'm a mum, I'm really busy, I work, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But God's challenging me and I I feel like I need to do the same with you as well, that our lives are always going to be busy. (laughs) There are always going to be things that prevent us from coming to God and spending time with Him. And yeah, I don't want to miss those moments of connecting with God. I want to be intentional about connecting with Him. I want to share my heart with him. I want to find comfort and rest in him. I want to seek him for the answers for things that I'm unsure about. I want to give him praise and thanksgiving. And I want 
want to spend time reading his word so that I'm strengthened, so that I can understand the character of God with the intention of becoming more like him. And from that point, we get the overflow and we get what we've had this morning. We get that outpouring of this expression of love for him and we can take that to people who don't know God and we can show them who God is. There will always be things that will be a higher priority than God if we let them be. So I leave you with a couple of questions. In this season, how are you intentionally making time? What are some things in your life right now that are hindering you from spending time with God? And are there any sacrifices or changes in your priorities that you could make to be able to spend more time with God? And this is not to make you feel bad about what you are or aren't doing currently. Because I think we can always do things better. But know that there's no judgment from God. He just wants you to come. He just wants you to give him your time and give him space. I'm actually going to just continue on from that. We had a couple of times we just caught up to talk about what we were going to share and it's actually ended up changing as we've talked and they actually flow right into each other. And I just want to start with putting out a statement of what worship is, that I am worship. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, come on. You are worship. Yeah, that's good. And sometimes that could be misconstrued or misunderstood because it sounds like it's about me. But stay with me. Because worship is about who we are, it's not something that we do. Yeah. Worship is not music and music is not worship. But it can be. And it is part of it. But it's not on, of itself. And I was challenged by this thought recently that said too often the church has believed, the church as in the generalisation of the church, has believed on behalf of the believer. That's right. The church has done the believing. We've just turned up. We've accepted and we haven't actually put that personal connection in. And as the Western world, we have, we, when I'm saying that, is we as the church as a generalisation, not our church specifically, not us personally. We, we've created a culture where there is an extremely high reliance on worship music yeah. within the church service. Yeah. To the point where we had a pandemic where everything goes online yeah. and some churches couldn't put their worship in. They didn't have the technology to do it. And they had their congregations going, oh, I'll put some worship music in there. But why was it actually needed? Why do you have to have a song in a church service? It's a bit challenging. Because I am a massive believer in the power of musical worship. Massive believer. But it is not the worship itself. Have we become too reliant on someone worshipping for us? When you go and spend time with God, when was the last time you sat in silence? Didn't put a playlist on. Didn't sing a song. Musicians didn't pick up an instrument. Are we watching more than engaging? In a world of digital media and with a pandemic where we're watching a lot of digital media, are we watching the praise and worship? Or were we worshipping? Worship can be any and every aspect of our life, but it starts with a relationship with the Father. As we spend time with Him, He reveals to us who we are and we can then live out of that. And then I am worship. When I'm living out of who I am, who He created me to be. I read a great book called um, I Am Not Because I Know I Am by Louis Giglio. And he talks about how when we know I am, we sang about this morning, the I am. We don't have to strive to be someone. We become who I am created us to be. And that is worship, when we're being who He created us to be. And so it doesn't matter what your role is in life, whether it is to be a mum, whether it's to be a doctor, whether it's to be a teacher. It doesn't matter what that is. When you are being you, when you are being in relationship with the Father. There's this book called With by Sky Jathani, and he talks about how most of the time we live 
with a particular connection to God um, out of four different connections. So we either live, we as in all of humanity, not just Christians, we either live under God, so that's in fear of judgment. We live over God, not needing Him, self-reliance. We live for God, that's the busyness, the hurried, on mission, constantly needing to be doing something for God. Or from God, and that's that kind of genie in a bottle mentality. We often live from one of those four things. But we're actually meant to live with God. Wow. And for Him to live within us. That's great. Psalm 46 verse 10, Surrender all your anxiety. Be silent and stop your striving and you will see that I am God. I heard this description of solitude and it actually says, Silent awareness in the presence of God. Silent awareness in the presence of God. Often people are too scared of what they might find when they are left alone with their own thoughts. But the more that we practice being and being aware of Him being present in the moment, those self-thoughts will turn into His thoughts. They'll be replaced with His thoughts because we're with Him. But if you don't start doing it, like Fee said, you have to create the time and space. If you don't start doing it, it won't actually shift. The solitude will become hard until you actually start doing it. And then as time goes by, it'll become easier. This great definition of like description of solitude is solitude well practiced will break the power of busyness, haste, isolation and loneliness. You'll see that the world is not on your shoulders after all. You'll find yourself and you'll find God in new ways. Silence also brings Sabbath to you. It completes solitude, for without it, you cannot be alone. Far from being a mere absence, silence allows the reality of God to stand in the midst of your life. It allows the reality of God to stand in the midst of your life. God does not ordinarily compete for our attention. In silence, we come to attend. What a great little description there of solitude. Silence, we come to attend. I just want to say, reading a scripture quote on Instagram or Facebook is not enough to sustain you in a relationship with the Father. It's great. Share them, encourage one another. But it of itself is not enough. We need to spend that time opening the Word of God, sitting there with Him, allowing Him to speak to us. Take that time to ask Him questions and give Him the space to answer. Often we don't give Him that time to respond to us. We come with our list of requests. We read a scripture, we try and understand it. But come with a scripture and say, what does this mean, Lord? Maybe there's something that doesn't make sense to you. Ask Him, what does it mean? Or maybe He's put something on your heart instead of just going to, oh, I think that means this. Ask Him what He wants it to mean for you. He might reveal aspects and facets of what He's saying. Psalm 39, verse 23 to 24 says, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Allow Him to search your heart. And then let Him bring life. Bring restoration. Bring healing. Bring fullness that's only found when we spend that time with Him. God's been trying to get our attention through this season, hasn't He? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But let's not miss a moment because we're pursuing a destination. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Don't miss it because you focused out there. Yeah. Be here yeah. with Him. So we don't need to create worship. We need to be worship. Very good. Yes. Very good. Being worship is you being in a relationship with the Father. Yes. That then creates testimony. And that then leads others into relationship with Him. Yes. That's worship. Come on, come on. Being you. It's so good. So what's your testimony in this season? What will you tell the generations to come? Will this pandemic be a collection of memes about putting on weight, a series of conspiracy theories and a memory of binge watching Netflix? Or will it be a catalyst for where everything changed? And where your personal relationship with the Father went from something on your to-do list to something deeper, more intimate, and something that actually changed the way that you do life. Will you let your relationship with Him change the way that you actually go about your life? Come on, yes. Will you be worshipped? Yes, yes, yes. So good. So good. Yes.
so good. So what we're going to do right now is actually, we're going to have a moment of solitude. Just a moment. Just to give you a taster. But I encourage you to go and put this into place in your own world because we don't have time to give you lots of time in solitude right now. We've got some great time of fellowship to come. But we're just going to take one minute and I'm actually going to ask the band to stop. And I want you to either reflect on the questions that Fee shared or you can ask God, is there anything that you want to say to me in this moment? Or would you reveal to me anything that is blocking my relationship with you? That was just one minute. For some of you that would have been easy. For some of you that would have been awkward. It's okay. The more you do it, the easier it will get. But this is not an either or, it's a both end. Come on. It's not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Yep. I wholeheartedly believe in worship music and there is massive power in declaring the truth of God in our world. We carry it into our world when we declare it and music has a profound ability to carry thought yeah beyond just spoken words. Mm -hmm. It actually connects in a deeper level. So I'm actually gonna ask Van just to lead us one more time before we finish up. And we're gonna just declare those words, I am who I am, because the I am tells me who I am. <laughs> I that line right. <laughs> so let's all stand, and we're gonna declare those truths into our lives. So good.